All right, uh, I guess we can begin. Just uh, let me know when I am visible to you. <clears throat> yes, there you are. Okay, I can see Anusha as well. Hi, Anusha, am I audible to you? Uh, yes. Okay, great. So, one second. Is it possible for the both of you to turn on your videos as well? Or is there would there be any problem? Okay, hi Anusha. Uh, Anusha, what about you? Yes, I'm turning it on. Okay, sure. <clears throat> All right, guys, uh, it's great to see you guys live. Uh, so can you first of all, tell me about yourselves? Like, where are you from? Like, what do you do? Are you a full-time student, working professional? Or, uh, you know, and of course, more importantly, regarding the status of your, uh, you know, video lectures, have you like, are you a student here and have you completely watched the video lectures, et cetera? So if you can tell me that, that would be great. Uh, Anusha, you can go first. Yeah, so I'm basically from Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did my BCom professional in Manipal. Okay. And, uh, I'm done with my SBL. I'm currently, I wrote SBR this September. And I'm studying for AAA this December. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. good to know. And, uh, I have already registered with Femtram and I'm got in the recorded classes. So I started studying. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm working uh, as an audit intern under a chartered account. Okay, uh, which, uh, like, uh, oh, okay, under a chartered accountancy firm. Okay, okay, good to know. How did you get to know of Fintram, if you don't mind telling me? I think I saw a YouTube uh, video with the demo lecture. Mm -hmm. I was actually going through classes because I wanted an offline coaching for uh, this thing. Since I'm working, I actually preferred offline, but then I did not find any online classes to my convenience. And okay. uh, recorded classes would be, uh, was a plus for me, so that's why I chose. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Anuja, what about you? Uh, so basically, I'm from Rampur. Uh, I have just given my SPL exam, so if that clears, AAA will be my last for ACCA. Okay, that's good. Great, great. So, and uh, I just re got registered myself from Printram. So yeah, mm -hmm. I just started looking the lectures and I'm also working full time. So yeah. Okay. Oh, you're working as well. What do you work as? Uh, I'm working as a senior accountant for a uh, for MNC from US. Okay, that's nice. Great. Good to know. Uh, all right, guys, so welcome to this orientation session. So this is basically where I give you a brief idea as to, uh, you know, what the advanced audit and assurance is all about. Uh, but before that, just to uh, clarify something, Anuja, are you, a, uh, I'm sorry, if I missed out on this, so are you a student here or are you like, uh, have you purchased the video lectures? Yes, I have purchased Okay, it. okay. And uh, what is the status as of now? Have you completed it? No, I've just started looking at okay, them. Okay, okay. No problem. No, no worries. It's, uh, that's that's good to know. Uh, so for uh, this particular session, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a brief idea as to what the, uh, you know, AAA syllabus is all about, AAA exam structure is all about. We will talk about professional markings. And of course, what exactly do we need to do in order to prepare for your upcoming exam? Both of you are attempting for December, right? Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, we will be conducting the, you know, all the planning related activities uh, right now uh, in this session. And of course, there will also be, you know, continuous, uh, you know, live sessions, uh, most most probably from the next week itself. As for the timing, I will communicate it to you. But uh, in the next few live sessions, I will be, you know, doing a lot of other fun activities as well, such as, uh, you know, let's, let, uh, I, I am trying to involve like question practice more on a live session so that, you know, it'll be more, uh, you know, helpful to you to understand how to go about questions when it comes to the exam. And of course, there are also some technical articles as well as various other aspects that we can discuss as well. So all of these things will be covered in your upcoming live sessions. For now, we will be just focusing on the planning aspect of things, right? So uh, I'll be sharing my screen. <clears throat> Let me know when it's visible, okay? 
It's visible. Okay. So that's good to know, guys. So uh, when it comes to the AAA paper, guys, let me tell you that uh, this is like one of the uh, you know paper with a low uh, with a low pass percentage. You if you may have heard of this from you know ACCA website or from your friends or colleagues as well. So let me tell you that the pass percentage is something that we should ignore first of all because there is a set of things that you have to do you know to prepare for this particular paper and once you're done with that it's it'll be a bit more easier for you to you know pass this paper i can uh, you know guarantee you that much at the moment now uh when it comes to the parse percentage if you if you think about it it's like there are like millions of students uh you know writing for this paper perhaps i don't know the exact number of course uh you know it's not publicly available or anything so yeah there's that and out of these around uh i would say 30 to 35 percent or so uh will pass the exam that's 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 basically the parse percentage that you may have heard of right but let me tell you guys uh you know majority of these students may not either you know uh attempt the exam either seriously or with a learning provider or uh you know some of them may not prepare for the exam due to lack of time uh due to their you know work or things like that so there are there are an n number of reasons why students fail in in, in this particular exam and another aspect or there's another category of students who miss out on certain things like uh they miss out on uh let's say or, or let's say that they what they try to do is they try to expect what can come up in the exam and just focus on that or there are students who uh, uh you know who would uh what what they do is they just uh you know uh they just yeah they just learn some aspects of the syllabus and then uh you know go attend their exam hoping that some miracle would happen but the problem uh, with the, the reality of the situation is that it doesn't happen that way isn't it so uh the idea that you have to understand here is that 100% of the syllabus should be covered before attempting your exam. And we have done that throughout our video lectures as well. So try to finish that. Try to uh, like uh, try to learn 100% of the syllabus without missing out on anything as soon as possible and get started with your question practice as well. Right? So, you know, another uh, reason for students to fail in the exam is to uh, not practice questions as well. Or in other words, they may not practice enough questions for them to tackle what, whatever come up, comes up in the exam. So question practice is as equally important as learning the syllabus as well. So this is this is something just to give you a brief idea as to you know uh, you know how to uh, go about this paper and it's, it's not a theory paper or anything no, you know uh, as in that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a you know calculation based paper or anything as well it's it's a practical paper so you will have to consider what the situation is and then uh, write your answers accordingly or make decisions or provide uh, you know procedures or findings accordingly so yeah that's another aspect to it. Now, when it comes to the AAA exam, as you may uh, know, it's it's like the uh, uh, an advanced version of the audit and assurance paper, which you can find in your skill level uh, exams. And when it comes to the AAA paper, I would say that it's sixty percent SBR, right? You will learn the SBR level accounting standards, or you will need the knowledge of the SBR level accounting standards when it comes to this particular exam. That involves, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I I hope that, you know, both of you have already attempted the SBR paper. If not, just let me know. Uh, is there any situation like that? Anusha, have you attempted the SBR paper? Yeah, I'm waiting for the results. Okay, okay, great, great. Uh, so you have that knowledge of the accounting standards mm -hmm. and everything. You may have some notes to yourself as well. So that's great. You, It's really useful when it comes to the uh, AAA exam as well. Uh, I actually had a I had a student in the previous session where uh, you know uh, she she didn't it was her first paper or so I don't remember exactly she was from Bangalore as well and she didn't attempt the SBR paper she's waiting for the results now but uh, even if that is the case I'm telling you even if that is the case no worries because I have covered 
there is a, a particular section within the video lectures where I have revised. I haven't, you know, gone in depth uh, to through all of the accounting standards like what you would see in a SBR session. But I have revised through all the necessary accounting standards uh, in one of those video lectures so that you know you can still, even if you haven't attempted the SBR paper, you will have the idea as to what that accounting standard is and what are the principles that is relevant for AAA, et cetera, All these things, right? So. That's a really important set of sessions. So I would recommend maybe, you know, revising through those. There are also notes that, uh, you know, along uh, with that particular sessions as well. So keep on revising those and to refresh your memories as well. If you don't have any, you know, prior uh, SBR notes or anything like that. So just to just to give you an idea. So AAA paper is like 60% of SBR and another 20% of whatever you've learned in AA. And the rest of the 20% is what you learn as a new topic or advanced topic, I would say. So that's that's basically as to what this paper is all about. Just to just to give you a brief idea as to what it what it's all about. So yeah, that's that's basically triply, uh, and we we have you know almost covered everything. Uh, and of course, there are also the current issue aspects uh, when it comes to this particular paper. I will get into that when we discuss about the syllabus, as you can see here. So when it comes to current issues, these are something that are uh, you know that can be updated. Uh, you know that that is updated by ACC sometimes. For example, they may issue a new technical article within the uh, ACCA website. So I would highly recommend always keeping an eye open over those uh, technical articles. Of course, we will be uh, you know discussing any such technical articles which we haven't covered through our video lectures or which has been you know newly released or so. So that's that's there. But still, I would always uh, recommend you guys to keep an eye out for any new technical articles that can come up in the uh, come up in the ACCA's website, or uh, you know, there might be new things that you get to know from uh, various uh, from your friends or colleagues as well. So just just uh, you know, keep your eyes open for any current issues that can come up for this particular paper. So these are some basic things that I wanted to convey, you know, before getting into the syllabus. Now, so let's talk about the syllabus of advanced audit and assurance. So when it comes to the advanced audit and assurance syllabus, we have around nine syllabus areas right uh we have yeah, yeah nine syllabus areas when it comes to the uh triple um, a syllabus so let's talk about each of these syllabus areas one by one well the last two is something of a skill nature so there's no technical knowledge that you have to learn into it uh, you have to learn about but yeah we will get into that so first of all we have syllabus part a regulatory environment and this is where you do two things firstly you will revise all the basic concepts of auditing and secondly, you will learn about how the audit profession is regulated, right? So that, that's basically what is covered within this particular syllabus here. There are some regulations such as the you know, I, uh, IASA standards uh, or other standards issued by IAASB, such as the ISQM, et cetera. So all these things will be learned within, uh, you know, uh, or the basic regulatory concepts will be learned within syllabus part A. And then we move on to syllabus part B, and this is where we we talk about professional and ethical considerations. And this is like the easiest syllabus area if you think about it, because you know uh, professional ethics is something that you may have learned in several other papers as well. You may have learned it in uh, SBL, SBR, or various other skill level papers, or uh, yeah, you know, maybe in other uh, optional papers as well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so that's basically the thing. And you, uh, you know, may have attempted the EPSM module, uh, you know, uh, if, if you have. Uh, so that's that's basically it. It's just the you know basic professional ethics concepts, and of course there are some. Uh, something more to it as well. There's something called professional issues that are commonly tested in the exam as well. So you will learn about those professional issues as well. And of course, there are also some, you know, other basic things that you have to know uh, as to uh, regarding these professional issues or ethical issues as well. So such as some rules or safeguards that you adopt against ethical threats and things like that. So all these things are covered in syllabus part B. And then we move on to syllabus part C, where we talk about quality management. So uh, have the both of you heard about the term quality control somewhere? Quality control, have you heard of it? So when it comes to that particular term, 
we now call it as quality management. And this is just a term updation when it comes to the, uh, you know, auditing standards. Because earlier, we used to we used to learn about ISQC1. Has any of you, uh, you know, uh, like, have you attempted the AA paper or were you exempt from it? Can you tell me that, Anusha? Uh, I haven't. I actually got exempted from Okay. That okay. No problem. No problem. Uh, Anusha, what about you? Same with the exempted. Okay. 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 And no worries. We we still have, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's like AAA is like 20% double A, but we have covered all those. We have covered those portions, you know, uh, in syllabus area A and various other syllabus areas. So there's, uh, you don't have to worry about that or anything, but, uh, you know, uh, just to, just to inform you regarding this. There used to be a standard known as ISQC1 or International Standards on Quality Control, but the terminology is now changed to something different and we now call it as quality management. That's that's basically it. Quality control is something that you may have seen in several other papers as well, but yeah, now we call it quality management. So just a, just a small update, that's it. Now, when it comes to uh, quality management, uh, this is uh, another, there's another kind of question that can be tested in the exam as well. So in this question, what you would have to do is you will have to point out some quality deficiencies uh, 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 that that a particular audit manager or a particular audit professional has conducted. It could be anyone, it doesn't necessarily have to be an audit manager, it can be an audit junior, it can be any of the audit staff or any member any individual within the audit firm. So if there are some quality issues, then you will have to highlight that. And you you may have to provide some, uh, you know, actions to be taken in such cases as well. So that's basically as to what quality management is all about. And let me tell you guys, as auditors, the term quality or yeah, the quality of the work that you do is really important. Why exactly is that? Because at the end of the day, ensuring quality will enable you to provide an appropriate audit report. Right, so that's that's basically the primary idea here. Because if you if if you lack the quality, then obviously the opinion that you provide on the financial statements will be incorrect, isn't it? And that will have legal consequences. A lot of investors would be cheated, right? So that's basically the thing. So quality is a really essential aspect, and the examiner just wants you to understand that as auditors, you will have to you know point out these quality related issues. You should be able to identify quality related issues within the organization, within the audit firm, not the audit client, the audit firm, right? So that's basically it. That's basically as to what quality management is. You know, even though it would you know seem like a, too much of a theory, but it's kind of uh, it's kind of some you know simple basic concepts. That's basically all there is to it. Now, moving on to syllabus part D, we have planning and conducting an audit of historical financial information. Now, this is where we learn about the entire audit process. Well, maybe not entirely, but, uh, you know, the, see, audit is a process, right? It has three stages to it. Of course, there could be, you know, several organizations may define it differently, but primarily there are, you know, three phases to it. First of all, there's a planning phase. Right. So we plan everything that needs to be audited. We conduct risk assessment activities, things like that. And then there is the execution phase. And this is where we implement the procedures. We conduct procedures, gain evidence, sufficient and appropriate evidence, isn't it? And then uh, we move on to the third phase, that is uh, review and reporting phase. This is where we ultimately review everything, make sure that we have conducted the audit appropriately and we provide the opinion. So the planning phase and execution phase is basically co uh, covered within syllabus part D. And this is also where we've also covered the accounting standards as well. Because primarily, most of the questions within your AAA paper will be will be highlighting a, an accounting issue, and you should be able to identify what that accounting issue is, so that you can you know uh, provide the necessary action that should be taken against it, or to assess the impact of that particular issue as well. So, that's basically what we look at in syllabus part D, just the audit process from the planning to execution. And in syllabus part E, we look at completion review and reporting. This is where we talk about the audit report. How do we provide audit opinion? What all things do we have to consider? How What all things should we review, EQR, et cetera? All these things are uh, you know learned in this particular syllabus area. And then we move on to part F, that is other assignments. So guys, up until syllabus part E, or I would say around uh, maybe 60 to 80% of what you learn from syllabus part A to E is already covered within the 
audit and assurance paper because it's primarily focused on the audit process as a whole. However, when it comes to syllabus part F, we talk about other assurance engagement as well. Okay, folks, so audit firms, what they do is they not only provide the uh, statutory audits, or I would say uh, the, they don't necessarily provide, they, they not only provide the you know audit on the financial statements, but they also provide other services as well, such as review of prospective financial information. There is something called due diligence review. There's something called forensic audit. So there are a lot of cool stuff that audit firms provide as a service, isn't it? So you will learn about all those assignments within syllabus part F. So that's the new thing that you will be learning when it comes to the AAA uh, paper uh, it, within the part F that is other assignments section. There are also some new standards involved in the other syllabus areas as well, just to uh, you know give you an insight. And of course, we have syllabus part G, and this is primarily in relation to the current issues and developments. Of course, there has been introduction of data analytics. There has been uh, revisions being done on the uh, professional code of ethics in relation to uh, things like the uh, things like definition of bias. There are several other biases due to the introduction of or due to the adoption of technologies in the audit. So there are multiple things like that, which we need to take a look at as well, right? So that's basically as to what we would cover in part G, current issues and developments, as simple as that. Now moving on to part H. And in part H, we talk about the professional skills. As we know, when it comes to the AAA exam, 80 marks is for the technical marks, isn't it? The technical marks which we score by writing our answer. However, the rest of the 20 marks of AAA is for professional marks, right? This has been introduced from the previous September session. Okay, folks, so it's kind of easy. It's, it's kind of really easy to, uh, you know, uh, score these. Uh, once you have an understanding as to what this is. And of course, we will be discussing that. And then we have part I, which is employability and technology skills as well. So these are like skills. Okay, folks, professional skills and technology skills are just skills. You don't have to learn anything extra here. It's just that it's like a way of answering. That's basically it. So for technology and employability skills, these are this is basically the you know the basic Excel or spread, uh, spreadsheet or word processor understanding that you need in order to present your answer or uh, how exactly or, or what are the functionalities available in the CBE environment. So that's that's basically as to what it is. You just have to learn how to navigate through the CBE environment. That's basically as to what part I is all about. There's nothing new to learn. There's no definitions or any topics to learn here. It's just a skill that you need to develop when answering or when providing or presenting your answer to the examiner. Right? Is that clear? Any questions? No, right? Okay, good to know. Now, moving on to the next aspect. So for the syllabus updates, well, this is basically, uh, you know, primarily, uh, these are basically updates that are that are uh, implemented from the September 2022 exam session. So we will learn about ISA 220, ISQM1, and ISQM2, which is, you know, uh, we have revised these standards, right? We have updated these standards, just like I mentioned before, and uh, we have provided you with the updated video lectures as well. So there's no issue in that. And of course, there is this sustainability information and reporting aspects as well. We have done some questions in relation to these as well. And of course, uh, you know, there would be some, Maybe there could be some technical articles that could be published. Of course, we can't you know, expect anything. And if there is any such thing, then we can discuss that particular aspect as well, right? So just to, just some basic updates when it comes to the AAA syllabus, that's all. Now, moving on to the next aspect, we have the exam structure. <clears throat> so what is the exam structure all about? Uh, give me a minute. Okay, uh, Anuja has left for some reason. Okay, might be some technical issue. Now, uh, moving on with the <clears throat> well, with the agenda for today, so we can uh, now take a look at the exam structure. So as I mentioned before, we have around 80 marks for technical marks and 24, uh, 20 marks for the uh, professional marks, isn't it? So uh, keep that in mind. Now, uh, coming back to the exam structure as a whole. So the AAA exam is a three hour, 15 minutes exam, right? We have three hours and 
15 minutes additionally as well. Now, when it comes to section A, we have we will have one 50 mark case study question. And out of these 50 marks, 40 marks will be for technical marks and 10 marks will be for professional marks, right? And these professional marks can be tested through various skills as well. And I would say, you know, three to four marks out of these are like definite, uh, you know, you can easily score those as well. So yeah, just to give you an idea. <clears throat> So that's basically uh, all about the 50 mark uh, case study question in section A. And when it comes to section B, we will have two 25 mark questions. And each of these uh, 25 mark questions will carry 20 marks are uh, 20 marks as technical marks and then five marks are professional marks. Okay, folks. So that's basically the new exam structure i would say it's it's like you know his has taken effect from the september session and let me tell you guys you guys are really lucky when it when you're since you're attending the december session because you will have the examiner's report and various things like that in relation to these uh you know professional marks and things like that close to maybe uh by mid of october or so so yeah when is the result i think it's next week or next to next week right if i'm not wrong okay so yeah, let's uh, hopefully wait for that. Even I'm a bit, you know, stressed when it comes to the results because I have a lot of students. So yeah, uh, you know, I used to like uh, during my days of attempting the exam, like the the, the, the result is published at like five thirty in the morning or so, right, Indian time. So I used to like wake up at four thirty for some reason automatically. I don't even you know put an alarm for it. I I always plan on waking up at eight o'clock or something like that, but you know it automatically comes up. So I wake up at, you know, 4.30 uh, and then, you know, I'm really stressed till for the next 30 minutes for some reason. So, yeah, uh, I think you can, some of you can relate to that as well. But yeah, I, I was hoping that, you know, after, you know, writing all those exams and after, uh, you know, completing my exams, I, I wouldn't have to do this anymore. But, you know, after I started teaching, it's the same thing again. I automatically wake up at 4.30 waiting for the, you know, students' results for some reason. Anyways, uh, moving on. <clears throat> so that's basically the exam structure. Now moving on to the next aspect. Of course, we have learned, you know, how to or, or how the exam structure is. And of course, now we have to understand what exactly should the time strategy be as well, isn't it? So let's talk about that, shall we? So when it comes to the time strategy, <clears throat> we have two sets of questions here which is a there's a 50 mark question and then there's a 25 mark question right so for each of these questions i would divide the divide the time that i'll take to answer these into two phases there is the reading and planning phase and then there is the writing phase as well right so reading and planning and writing, it's, it's really important that you utilize these times for its purpose. Otherwise, it'll be really inefficient and you may not be able to complete your answer as well. So yeah, strictly follow this time strategy. I will get into that. But before that, uh, what is reading and planning exactly? When reading and planning, you do three things, basically. First of all, you read the requirement of, this, of the particular question to understand uh, what exactly is needed by the examiner. Secondly, you read through the entire scenario to understand what the situation is. And thirdly, you plan a structure for your answer so that you can, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, you can, so that you can structure your answer appropriately to score both the technical marks as well as the professional marks as well. Right? Is that clear? Clear, right? So that's basically what we do when reading and planning. So when it comes to the 50 mark question, I can take around 20 to 25 minutes in order to read and plan. Of course, it could be different for different people because you know some people are like fast readers that they, they may uh, you know uh, they may finish it in maybe 15 minutes or even 20 minutes depends upon you right and some may be slow readers and therefore you 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 may finish things or you may finish the reading and planning in like 25 minutes. So utilize the time appropriately. Uh, you can of course adjust these timings you know. Uh, into however that is suitable to you. This is just, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you should only take a maximum of 25 minutes, nothing more for reading and planning. That's something that I would advise. Now, uh, so when it comes to the 25 minutes, you have to utilize it efficiently so that you can, uh, or you, ha you have to, you know, utilize it for the purpose 
that I just said, that is, you know, to plan the structure, to read the scenario requirements, etc., so that you can efficiently write your answer for the next an hour and five minutes. Okay, so that's basically the uh, uh, the, the the strategy that you should take for a fifty mark question. Take 20, 20 to twenty five minutes to read and plan, and then one hour and five minutes to write your answer. Right? Clear? Now, moving on to the twenty five mark question. So we have a total of 45 minutes to attempt the 25 mark question. And out of these, eight minutes will be for reading and planning and 37 minutes will be for writing. Of course, you can make slight adjustments based on your level of ability as well. So yeah, uh, so that's basically as to what the time strategy should be. So remember guys, strictly follow this time strategy because I've I've heard from a number of students that, you know, uh, some students, uh, you know, that come, come to us are like, uh, you know, they're like attempting the exam for the second time. And they're like explaining the fact that, uh, that uh, they, they took like two hours to write the 50 mark question. Well, that's basically because they're not following the time strategy appropriately, or uh, they may not have, you know, split the, you know, reading and planning and writing phases separately. It, it's due to the, these reasons. So they strictly follow this time strategy, strictly follow this approach to answer the questions that comes up in your exam. Now. Another thing that I would say is uh, the reason why I'm telling you this at the initial phase of your preparation is that. Uh, it, it, so that you guys can, you know, start practicing questions using this time strategy, because it's not just about, uh, you know, applying this in your actual exam, but when practicing questions, try to practice timed questions. Don't take more than, uh, you know, two hours or three hours for a particular 50 mark question when practicing it, right? Initially, it might happen. Like initially, like for the first time that you're practicing a question, it might take uh, maybe, you know, even two to three hours or even more than that depending upon your ability, right? However, with practice, you should be able to become a bit more compatible with this particular time strategy. So yeah, that's something that I would advise. Strictly follow this and strictly uh, follow this when practicing questions as well. So yeah, now moving on to the next aspect. And I believe this is something that you're, uh, you'll are you find interesting as well. So now we're gonna talk about the professional skills. <clears throat> So when it comes to the professional skills, there are four professional skills that you will have to demonstrate when it comes to the AAA exam. There's the communication skill, analysis and evaluation skill, professional skepticism and judgment, and of course, commercial acumen as well. Now, so uh, one second. Yeah. So what is the communication skill all about? <clears throat> so folks, communication skill involves things like uh, presenting. It's it's kind of like what we used to have in the previous sessions as well. Uh, so what you have to do is, in order to score these marks, you'll have to structure your answer. That's that's basically all there is to it. And communication skill is usually tested in the 50 mark question. So yeah, uh, what you have to do is you will have to provide, usually the uh, question will be for you to prepare a briefing note for the engagement partner. Right. So what you will have to do is you will have to provide the structure of a briefing note. Just provide the two from date subject, etc. Provide an introduction, provide a heading and subheadings for the body of your answer. And finally, provide a conclusion as well. Right. And that's just one aspect of it. The second aspect is whenever you're writing something, try to, uh, you know, try to involve profess a bit more professional language. And of course, try to uh, make sure that you are communicating what you're intending to communicate, right? You are speaking to a partner or you are sending this briefing note to a partner. So make sure that the language that is in involved in the, within that particular briefing note is capable uh, to be presented in front of a partner, right? So that's basically what communication skill is. Uh, you would get around maybe three to four marks for communication skill. Now, moving on to the next aspect. Analysis and evaluation is kind of easy to score. All you have to do is you just have to utilize the information provided in the scenario and include it somewhere in your answer. That's basically as to what analysis and evaluation is. And it's especially tested when, when there is an analytical review which is required to be conducted. Because in analytical review, what you will have to do is you will have to calculate some ratios and stuff, isn't it? And of course, you will have to interpret that ratio, identify as to whether there's something wrong with it or not. So that's basically where you score the analysis and evaluation skills marks. And then we have professional skepticism and judgment. 
And this is kind of easy for an audit paper because all you have to do is you just have to question everything that is within the scenario, question the management wherever necessary, and of course, utilize your judgment. Now, this judgment is really, the, the professional marks for judgment is actually really you know easy to score. I'll tell you why. Uh, so there are these uh, materiality calculations that you provide for audit risk questions and accounting issue related questions as well. So just for calculating that particular thing and just for interpreting what the materiality should be, you will get marks for it, right? So that's basically as to where you score the professional marks for skepticism and judgment. Simple as that. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, moving on to commercial acumen, and this would be a bit difficult to score because, uh, you know, what you have to do is you have to demonstrate commercial awareness of the client, right? You will have an audit client in that particular scenario. So you will have to understand what they do so that you can comment upon things that is relevant for the audit, right? So this is a, a bit of a tricky mark to score when it comes to the audit exam. But as long as you have that understanding of the audit client as to what they do or their business model, it'll be easy for you to uh, score these marks, right? Is everything clear? Do you guys have any questions as of now? <clears throat> no, right? Anuja, what about you? Please turn on your video, guy. Uh, video, Anuja. Otherwise, I won't be able to, you know, understand whether you are in the session or if there are any technical issues or so. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, perhaps there is some technical issues. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Just uh, let me know in case if you have any questions. So, yeah. So now let's discuss the plan of attack, shall we? So when it comes to the plan of attack for the AAA paper, we have a six step process. First of all, what you have to do is you will have to learn 100% of the syllabus and you have to revise these syllabus continuously till the day of your exam. Because of course, we're all humans, we tend to forget things. And of course, we may have learned everything on October. However, when it comes to uh, the last weeks of November, we may forget things, right? So in order to avoid that from happening, we will have to revise the key examinable areas as well as, you know, uh, the entire syllabus on a daily basis so that everything is, uh, you know, uh, you, so that you can grasp everything and memorize everything appropriately as well. And secondly, of course, practice, practice and practice, practice as much questions as you can till the day of your exam. That's something that I would highly, highly advise as well, because, you know, it's not just about learning the syllabus or learning the technical knowledge. It's also about applying that knowledge into practical scenarios so that you can, you know, uh, that that's basically how you get the marks, isn't it? So just keep on practicing a lot of questions through uh, the FinTram resources as well as the uh, you know licensed resources such as BPP or Kaplan as well. So I'm not gonna restrict you to just the FinTram or just uh, you know some questions or so uh, or just the past papers or so. Just practice as much as many questions as you can. That's that's really necessary in order to clear this exam. Now, moving on to the next aspect, we have practicing the past paper questions as well. Now, the past paper is like a really important resource that you have to have to practice, isn't it? So when it comes to the past paper questions, this is available within the ACCA's website. There's a past exam library where you can you know, find a lot of uh, past papers over there as a PDF file st and stuff. Uh, however, uh, you can also find a lot of resources within the ACCA CBE practice platform as well. So do check that out. There are a lot of questions there. Keep on you know, practicing it. And of course, I would only recommend practicing these after your mock exam. Right, guys, uh, that's that's something that I, I want to state as well, because, you know, some of the questions in your mock exam are taken from these past papers because and of course, if you are like attempting the mock exam for the second time, then it'll be really difficult for me to provide you with an appropriate feedback. So uh, I, I highly recommend that you guys, you know, keep, um, you know, uh, refrain from practicing questions uh, before the mock exam. So yeah. Mock exam would be uh, by mid of November, most probably. Okay, folks. So, yeah, just just keep that in mind. <clears throat> uh, moving on to the next one. 
We have the examiner's report. This is yet again really essential, especially when it comes to the December session, because, you know, as I mentioned before, after um, after the or during the last week of October, or I'm not sure if they've released it as of now because I haven't checked the website yet. But uh, you know, you would be able to get uh, the examiner's report for the previous session where where the the professional skills were primarily introduced. So you would be able to understand, you know, where the students have went wrong, what are the improvement points that you have to adopt, and things like that. So an examiner's report is really a, a wonderful resource that you can uh, use. And of course, I would I would highly highly recommend reading the you know latest at, at least at least the latest three uh, examiner's report. So yeah. <clears throat> now, and of course, step five is to do a mock exam. So mock exams increases your chances of passing by 30%. The reason for this is due to two things. Firstly, you would be able to get a get an exam feeler when attempting a mock exams if you are attempting the mock exam under exam conditions and with the time strategy implemented. Secondly, you would also obtain you know personalized feedback from myself so that you know you can identify your areas of improvements and uh you know uh take corrective actions wherever necessary as well. So uh, I do I highly suggest that you attempt a mock exam as well. We will be providing you with the question, so don't worry about that. And of course, the personalized feedback is also there. And finally, there is the final aspect that is just to go, go and attempt the exam because you after you are done with step five, you are fully prepared for the exam and you, you just have to, you know, go attempt the exam with, uh, you know, uh, as much confidence as possible. So yeah, that, that's that's basically all there is to it. So yeah. So that's basically the you know the plan of attack. So you, do you guys have any questions uh, at, uh, as of now? All right. Okay. <clears throat> so folks, these step by step process or each and every one of these steps are really necessary for you to pass your exam. So I highly highly suggest to uh, you know follow it. So just another I would say random question that I'd like to ask you. Do you guys know what origami is? Have you ever heard of the term origami, O-R-I-G-A-M-I? -I. You know, the paper folding technique and stuff like that. So do you guys know about it or do you guys, have you guys, you know, do you guys know how to make any, you know, paper, you know, related stuff like that? No, nothing. Aeroplane is, for, aeroplane would be there obviously, right? <laughs> or a paper boat, perhaps. Okay, boat is also there. Anything else? Anusha? Like all kind of animals. <laughs> all kind of animals. Okay, great. <laughs> That's nice. Anusha, what about you? Okay. No, it's just the aeroplane and paper boat. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to consider the paper plane here. Let's say that I'm making a plane out of a piece of paper. So there is a step-by-step -step process to make that, right? You have to fold the paper on a step-by-step -step method to get that end result that is the paper plane, isn't it? Now, what if I miss out on one of those steps? Will I get the end result that is the paper plane? No, right? So these step-by-step -step processes are just like that. If you miss out on any one of these steps, I can't guarantee you the end result that is, you know, uh, passing the exam with a with, with a smiling face. That's that's basically it. So it's really important that you follow each and every one of these steps one by one so that, you know, so that you can, you know, you'll be really happy when the, uh, you know, results get published on uh, maybe January 15th or during that time. So, yeah. So, Anuja, I believe that, you know, after this paper, you are Anuja Mishra ACCA, right? Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, yeah. Of course, hopefully. I, I was expecting you to say hopefully, but <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh uh let's let's uh work for the best for that. So yeah. <clears throat> and uh Anusha, what what about you? How many papers do you have left? Two more. Two more. Yeah. Okay. If I complete SBR this time. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. If you complete SBR, then two more. Uh that includes AAA and another optional paper, right? Yeah, AFM. AFM, okay. It's really common for students to take up, you know, AFM and AAA for some reason. Not sure why. Yeah. I think it's probably because, you know, there are students who initially start out in the audit field and then they transition into finance. So do you mm -hmm. have like that kind of an objective or 
what is your objective that's I, i'm kind of you know curious to know all these things so yeah like what i want to work as or like my ambition or yeah. uh, let me let me ask you like uh, you know like an interviewer like where do you see yourself in the next 10 years as an auditor hopefully i oh, actually in the next 10 years okay <laughs> no no actually right now in the next 5 years i can say hopefully i look myself see myself being an auditor of a really nice company because that's where i mm-hmm. want to be in okay. the next 10 years hopefully i've been like i've completed my masters like you wanna, do you want to enter a big four or i don't know i'm really not <laughs> sure about that cuz like i've heard conflicting opinions from many of many people working in the big four like i've heard good as well as bad so i'm not really not sure mm-hmm. if i want to do that but big four uh, or there are like other mncs other as well like bcg or bdo yeah. or you know companies like that so that's what you're aiming for like i do want to work in corporate and you know remain there and i want to complete my master so hopefully oh, something okay. really good big in finance is what i see myself doing in mm-hmm. in finance okay okay yeah. so what kind of masters are you aiming for like uh, actually the thing is i wanted to work and see what i really wanted to get into and what okay. i might mm-hmm. like in right, the future right. because i really don't know how the practical aspect of it works mm mm-hmm, mm mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah that's that's so, good to know uh, i was thinking mm-hmm. i'll do mba first but then i've been having a lot of opinions like i'm keep changing my mind i'm very indecisive so okay 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 that's that's good to know uh glad that you shared that anusha uh, anusha so what about you anusha what what are your future plans do you see another promotion coming your way after your acc qualification <laughs> obviously right <laughs> yeah. and also like right now like um, my company like provide contracting accounting services to like mnc mm-hmm. so i am planning to open like my own company and okay okay mm-hmm. so that's my future plan see when it comes to the chartered accountancy courses there are like two pathways that you know usually students take either you can you know be an employee for a particular organization you know until you retire or you can you know initially start with employment and then you know start your own firm so of course there's no uh, i'm not saying you know one of these is better than the other or anything like that but it, it depends upon your choices and your you know uh, your objectives as to where you want to be or what you want to specialize in as well so yeah just to just to give you an idea and uh, <laughs> Okay so I haven't introduced myself right yeah I always tend to forget that sorry sorry guys I myself am uh, uh I'm Vishnu Vijay ACC affiliate at the moment and you know as uh, Anuja just like Anuja I will be Vishnu Vijay ACC around uh, January 15th or so because I'm yet to complete my practical experience aspect that's that's basically uh why the delay so yeah I'm already done with my exams I completed my ECCA when I was like uh around 19 years old so yeah that's 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 basically uh and after that I started like uh teaching and you know teaching with Fintram and uh with a lot of a lot of interesting students I usually ask questions like these like you know what are the objectives and what are your things like uh, you know you know what where do you see yourself etc so that i can you know get some more insights for myself as well and uh and and of course i currently i also work in a a big four audit firm uh it's a it's a firm called Ernest and Young i hope you've heard of that so yeah that's that's like my full time job but along with that i do you know provide guidance on for acc students on uh, several papers like triple a apm and there's double e and pm as well so yeah that's that's basically uh, just a rough idea about myself so yeah <clears throat> okay so the next thing that we are about to discuss is how to plan for the upcoming exam so this is something i believe that you've all been waiting for as well so let me just share a quick calendar with you so that you can give you an idea how to plan for it so one second <clears throat> just let me know when the screen is visible okay okay so we have 3 months left with us october november and december so how do we plan about this one second <clears throat> our exam 
But what is our objective here? So the idea here is to think of the objective and plan from there, right? So our objective here is to attempt the exam on the 5th of December. It's usually the first week of December, so I'm, just, I'm using 5th. So yeah, there we go. So the exam is on the 5th of December. Now, what we have to do is we already have learned about all the steps and things like that. So the next thing that we have to do here is let's let's plan from 5th of December and then, uh, you know, allot the, the steps that we discussed previously uh, into our schedule. I'm just going to prepare a rough schedule here. You don't necessarily have to follow what I've, uh, you know, provided over here. And of course, you can, you know, you will have to make adjustments to yourself depending upon your, uh, you know, work-related aspects or personal aspects, etc. So, yeah, just to give you an idea. So, I know that uh, these days will be allocated to some, you know, hardcore preparation aspect, like the final preparation aspect. So, I'm just going to, you know, keep it aside for that. For the end of November, from the end of November, uh, what was the previous step or what what was the we had we learned about six steps right so what was the fifth step that we learned do a mock exam isn't it so uh we we could plan on attempting the mock exam on let's say uh 15 to 18 that that could usually be the duration so i'm just gonna go with maybe 18th right 18th is when i'll attempt my mock exam now before attempting mock exams what do i have to do i have to do my past papers isn't it so for the past papers and of course the examiner's report, I will be allocating these days. That seems nice. So yeah, okay. And of course, uh, previous to that, I need to practice a lot of questions, isn't it? So I need to, I will be allocating these days for question practice as well. And maybe the second half, of October as well. There we go. <clears> or <throat> oh, last few weeks. So yeah. And for the rest of the day, I will have to learn 100% of the syllabus, isn't it? So this is basically just to give you an idea as to how to go about it, right? Of course, uh, you know, depending upon your time and related aspects, there would be there would be some some slight changes here and there within the schedule. But this is what you should aim for. Try to complete your uh video lectures by at least 20 to 20 seconds around that time, right? And after that, start practicing your question. By the last week of October, you should be able to, you know, uh, start practicing your questions so that, you know, you can follow the rest of the uh, things accordingly. I should have given a different color over here. One second. Uh, blue is always my favorite color, which is why, you know, the blue headings and stuff. What's your favorite color, Anusha? Black. Black. Mm -hmm. I can't give black anywhere. It's okay. Uh, Anusha, what about you? Black. <laughs> my goodness. Okay, never mind. <laughs> you guys have no. Don't you guys have a like a like a bright color as a favorite color or? Uh, brown. Brown. Brown is still a bit dark. Okay, in which way? <laughs> Okay, never mind. I I just wanted to change this gray to something else, but I can't change it to black, so <laughs> never mind. Uh, okay. Uh, and of course, my favorite color is like navy blue and purple as well, so it's not bright enough. So yeah, never mind. Anyway, just to give you an idea, uh, the gray portion is basically where you learn the syllabus. The light blue portion is where you practice questions. 18th, you attempt the mock exam. The exact date will be communicated to you. This is just to give you an idea. And after that, I'll practice my past papers. And uh, you know, from first to fourth, there would be hardcore, you know, last minute preparations. And then there is uh, on the fifth, that is on Monday, I'll happily go and attempt my exam. So this is the plan. Of course, you can make the necessary changes as uh, you know as you wish, depending upon it. Again, you are uh, you know. Uh, professional work-related aspects or personal aspects as well. But there are two words that you should keep in your mind when preparing the schedule and when following the schedule. And that's given right over here as the tab name. It's planning and consistency. So what exactly is the idea here? Well, it's not just about planning things. You'll have to implement it as well, isn't it? So keep motivated 
keep motivating yourself to you know follow that particular plan that just don't just you know make a plan and leave it be just uh, strictly follow it appropriately and of course if you miss out on one day that's fine totally fine just you know keep on consistently following it from the next day right so that's basically something that i would advise as well so do you guys have any questions relating to the entire session uh, I wanted to ask if that revision bootcamp covers like all exam kit questions. Not all of them. It's just the uh, just uh, around I would say twenty twenty five or so. I think okay, it's twenty five around that. And uh, do we have to solve the whole exam kit, like the Kaplan one? I would recommend that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, when practicing such questions, I would suggest practicing more of the past exam questions like within your exam kit there would be uh, yeah. questions marked as past exams right i would say majority of of it would be past exams so i would i would just you know practice those uh, rather than you know ones that are not marked because the others are like really easy and kind of uh, you know it, it won't do much good so just just practice the you know ones marked as past exams <clears throat> uh, one more thing was uh... Regarding the like you gave us like the printouts for uh, each session. So do we have to study the study text other than that, or will the study text? Okay, so uh, I'll tell you what I've done with the notes, shall we? So when it comes to the notes that you are referring to currently, both of you, uh, these notes are prepared from the BPP as well as Kaplan text, along with several other resources and you know my own, uh, you know resources that I, that I myself have, you know, referred to during my studies as well. So it's all like consolidated. And then, you know, uh, you know, uh, I, I've prepared the notes after, you know, considering all these things. So you don't necessarily have to refer to a study text or anything, right? It, it would be a really, you know, uh, you don't necessarily have the time for it, to be honest with you, because, you know, you're a working professional. And of course, uh, you know, referring to the study text is a really time consuming process. So you don't have to do that. Just refer to the notes itself. But if you want to, like, you know, research something a bit more, just just use it as a reference book or some kind. You get my point? Just just use it, uh, you know, for that purpose. However, you know, there's still an easy method to, you know, uh, do that because if you are doubtful about something in the notes, then you can, you know, come to me. I can, you know, clarify that concept as well. So, yeah, there's that. So we don't have uh, the study text may not have much role in the preparation, but, you know, the exam kit does. So, yeah, that's it. Anything else? So uh, I just wanted to like ask this out of context. So in case I don't make like don't pass SDR, will it be possible for me to complete both in the December yeah. section? Uh, you see, that actually depends upon you because uh, I'm I'm not sure about the level of work that you're intending for SBR now that you know. It, Let's God forbid that uh, if you fail the exam, uh, if you fail the ex SBR exam, I'm not sure as to what is the extent to which you will have to work towards clearing mm -hmm. that particular exam. But uh, and of course, uh, secondly, when it comes to the AAA and SBR aspect, it's it's fine learning these, but considering that you are a working professional and you may not have that much time to allocate. I would I would refrain from doing that. You can you know uh, there's there's no mandatory requirement that you have to you have to attempt triply after SBR. It's just that you know uh, that's recommended. That's it. And since you have the knowledge already about the SBR paper, you can you know go ahead and uh, you know attempt triply. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. Anything else, Anuja? Anything from your side? Not really. I was just. Uh thinking like i've just started uh, the session so I've, I've only done like three sessions now so i'm just wondering if i'll be able to complete them or not so like around 20 okay or so uh, all right then uh so regarding that let's 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 talk about some numbers then uh how much time can you allocate per day like on a weekday and on a weekend I want I want this answer from each of you. I know that I'm uh, taking a bit extra time to discuss this. I think yeah, but uh, let's let's try to wind up in the next ten or fifteen minutes. So yeah. Uh, so how, first of all, let's discuss the weekdays, shall we? Uh, how much time can you allocate to your studies on a on a weekday, on a working day? Right. 
four hours I can give teacher. Four hours. Four hours. Okay. Okay. Yes. And Anusha, what about you? <clears throat> I think I can give about two or three max. Two or three. Week. Not four? I mean I can try, yeah. Mm -hmm. But every day four, I don't think I can. Okay. Okay. Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, what are your working hours, if I don't mind asking? Uh, the thing is, I'm actually working part-time, but uh, I have a personal problem at home, so I can't really... That's I'm the reason I kind personal? of reduce, uh, my mom's sick and I have oh, to... Oh, okay, personal yeah. commitments. Okay, okay, okay. I, I totally understand that. Hmm. So I don't think, like, the thing is I have to run around with, for that and all that. So I think I can give around... Yeah, I can try for three to mm -hmm. four hours. It's not going to be an issue. Okay, okay. Try to try to make it at least four hours. Four hours is an ideal time. I, uh, uh, you know, I have heard you know students uh, saying that as well. So try to try to make it four hours. That's something that I would advise. But uh, you know, even though I asked you that, I'm I'm not. No, I'm not a hourly person. Let me t uh, tell you that because I have heard students saying that, especially like students from CA background, usually ask me uh, this question: that how many hours should I study to pass the exam? But uh, honestly, I'm more of a you know more of an output oriented person, and you know uh, output oriented persons are demanded everywhere. So uh, yeah, that's that's what I've become as well. So the idea is that let's let's make sure that the output is there. Like uh, you may have invested maybe four hours per day or five hours per day but uh in the case of practicing questions for example uh let's let's have a target of a number of questions rather than the hours to devote right i think that would be a bit more uh you know a bit more useful approach uh, than just focusing on the hours so let's let's target some questions to get done per day on a weekday as well as on a, a weekend shall we so on a weekday, how many questions? Uh, I'm considering the 50 mark and 25 mark aspects here. So first of all, let's say that you're practicing a 50 mark question. Can you uh, allocate time to practice two 50 mark question per day? Because one 50 mark question will take around two, two and a half hours. So uh, that's also another consideration. So try to try to target two 50 mark question, and that makes it four 25 mark questions, right? Uh, for 25 mark questions, I would say it would roughly take around uh, an hour or an hour and 15 minutes max. That's it. Right. So, uh, yeah, try to pra practice, try to get at least four questions done per day. Uh, you know, that's that's an ideal target. Uh, if that's not possible, I, you know what, I'll, I'll make it a bit more lenient. Uh, let's say two 25 mark questions and one 50 mark question. Let's let's do it that way. Right. I think that's a bit more, you know, achievable. Let's let's make it realistic so that you know we can follow it appropriately. So Anuja, Anuja, you will both be, you know, during your work a weekdays when it comes to your question practice after you're done with all your lectures, you will practice one 50 mark question and two 25 mark questions on a weekday. Now let's talk about weekends. How much time? Not forget the time. How many questions? If it's a 50 mark or and 20 mark, uh, Anuja, you can go ahead. <clears throat> Maybe I can do two fifty marks and four twenty-five marks for the weekend. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Like two fifty marks and mm -hmm. four twenty-five marks. Only two fifty marks. <laughs> I'll try to make. That's it a bit low, right? I mean, <laughs> it's a weekend, so I understand that you may have your, you know, weekend activities, but uh, you know, uh, it's just like four hours, so. Make it six, at least a bare minimum of six. Maybe you could you could target like three fifty mark. And I can tell you guys, it's it's kind of uh, you know, it's it's not that I'm not someone who would suggest my students only to focus on studies, avoid everything else. I would say just avoid what is avoidable, and you know, include some breaks or include some you know fun activities in between if you want to as well. That's totally fine because during my days of studies, what I'll tell you what I used to do. I had an institute where I. Uh, you know, go go practice some questions. For example, my target was to do around uh, four questions per day. Like I was a full time student at the time, uh, so I wasn't working or anything. So I used to do like four questions a day. What I did was I like woke up in the morning, did a question, 
and then went to went to an institute in 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 my institute at that time we had you know it was pre covid so definitely there was uh you know uh, some space to you know sit silently and you know study like in a library or it, it's a library kind of atmosphere so i just went there and did two questions over there and that made it like and two questions itself took like you know i i went there in like uh 10 10 am in the morning and came back at like 6 for two questions so in between of course there are like friends there are like uh you know there are like junior students like you know since you are attempting a p level paper there would be some uh you know skill level students or knowledge level students who come up to us asking questions you know we talk talk with each other uh you know we do some fun activities play games etc and of course uh uh you know i come back at 6 and do a question in the evening so as you can see here i haven't utilized my entirety for question practice it, it's just like uh what maybe 6 hours max that's it right so just like this you could plan your question it's just that we need to achieve the target and we need to you know grasp what exactly was there to grasp from that particular question that's it right so when practicing questions just target it that way on a weekend i would suggest you know four questions that's it for 50 mark questions or or you know what uh, i'll make it a bit more lenient uh 350 mark questions or uh let's say 625 mark questions right fine that's achievable right <clears throat> okay so plan it accordingly just assess your revision kits and various other resources and uh, you know make a schedule of your own that's that's something that i would recommend and a, an additional tip that i'd like to provide you is that whenever you are practicing questions or whenever you are uh, you know uh, uh, you know dealing with a 50 mark or 25 mark question just there would be something new that you learn from that question like an exam technique or a way of answering it could be how they presented the answer it could be a sentence or a word even so if there is anything new that you've learned i would just write it down in a piece of paper or in a, in a particular book so that i can use this book for revision purposes close to the exam right you get my point so whenever you are attempting a question just write down whatever uh you you know whatever new things that you've learned from it that's something that i would advise as well okay anything else guys no i actually noted something uh when i said i you know completed the acc papers at 19 you should have seen anusha's face right <laughs> uh, were you wondering uh, when did i do my graduation or something like that or... yes i was going to ask <laughs> you i was going to ask when did you come how did you know about okay okay i i i actually you know um attempted acc along with bcom Like okay. after twelfth, I it was like BCom yeah. plus ACC, and after that I did another graduation known as the. I, I I think you may have heard of this. There's a BSE honors in Ox from Oxford Brookes, right? Okay. You know, I I did that as well. So yeah, that's that's the graduation. As for the masters, well, there's a lot of time left. So, uh, yeah, that's something that I'll be planning as well. I am uh, doing a lot of research and learning at the moment regarding various things like you know data analytics and. Uh, there is a lot of things as uh, as such and of course in the firm that i work in there are a lot of learning opportunities over there as well so i'm just exploring those areas and of course there is the you know daily big four workload and a lot of students to manage so yeah that's a uh, day in the life of vishnu vijay i guess so yeah uh just to just to give you that idea now uh so uh i hope everything is clear do you guys have any other questions no okay all right guys uh glad i could meet you in this particular session and i will see you later in the next session uh which will be communicated to you soon it it will probably be in the next week but uh maybe not but uh i i would communicate this to you all right so you would receive the link and stuff maybe two or three days before so what i would say is just just open some space between uh maybe three o'clock to six thirty uh on your weekends for my session right so that's that's something that i would uh uh recommend as well so yeah all right guys uh thank you for joining and i'll see you later in the next session right bye thank you sir sure. thank you sir thank you bye